So we have some breaking news that progressives are taking a stand against Nancy Pelosi's totally inadequate Heroes Act. I spoke about this a couple days ago, where Pramia Jayapal, Ro Khanna, AOC, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, and many others have all been saying that Nancy Pelosi is trying to force a second stimulus act on the House of Representatives without actually consulting progressive Democrats on what should and shouldn't be in the bill. And there are good things in the HEROES Act, but there's also a lot of bad things, and crucially, two key elements are missing. There's a lack of a monthly $2,000 stimulus payment, and Premier Jayapal's Paycheck Guarantee Program isn't included in that particular stimulus package. There's also a sense that when it comes to things like ensuring medical care access, they're relying on funding the totally broken COBRA model instead of making actual investments into Medicare and Medicaid and considering expanding those programs, at least on an emergency basis, to cover those who have lost their workplace health insurance. And the crucial point here is that the vote today would basically lock in the entire 1800 page document. It's basically Nancy Pelosi and the Democratic leadership unaccountably forcing an entire, again, almost 2000 page stimulus package and making people vote a simple yes or no. When there wasn't meaningful consultation beyond that narrow group about what this bill should and shouldn't do. There should be less corporate bailout. There should be more help for working class Americans, less help for the biggest and wealthiest corporations, more help for small businesses. And that's what progressives and even some moderate Democrats are arguing. You're seeing an actual progressive pushback on this bill. If you look at Ro Khanna, he really words it perhaps the best here. When he says, I am voting no on the rule, the rule referring to the, you know, move to lock in this bill. We have a healthcare crisis, yet no expansion of Medicaid or Medicare. FDR didn't talk about employer and retirement accounts. LBJ didn't talk about voting rights in some precincts. They would have scoffed at COBRA to private companies. Need bold leadership. Ilhan Omar herself also made a good point saying, I'm a no on today's rule vote in the biggest crisis since the Great Depression. We should be leading with bold ideas that meet the scale of the crisis. We have proposed holistic solutions that will help us avoid a piecemeal approach to relief. And Zafir Teachout, a supporter of the Bernie Sanders campaign and somebody who's on the progressive wing of American politics, said that she stands with the efforts to oppose this bill from people like Ro Khanna and Pramia Jayapal, and that Nancy Pelosi is undemocratically trying to ram this bill through the House of Representatives with any actual accountability. This is a crucial moment to see where the good people are and where the rest are of the Congress is, at least in the Democratic side, where you can see the difference it makes to have a strong, they might be small, but a strong contingent of progressives in the House of Representatives. They might not all be equally progressive. They might not all agree on the Bernie versus Warren question. The people who picked Warren, I think were wrong, but they all believe here that Nancy Pelosi and her desire to continuously enrich already wealthy people and to fight for ice cream fridges and to fight for $24,000 freezers over working class Americans will not actually do the job here. And that the first stimulus bill was already bad enough, but maybe there you could argue that everyone was a bit, you know, shell-shocked and, you know, things needed to happen. This time around, this bill has to get it right. It has to get it right in terms of putting working class people first, in terms of health care, in terms of protecting their jobs, and in terms of guaranteeing that they have enough money for their basic material standards of living, food, shelter, electricity, you know, all those sorts of things for themselves and their children. And right now, Nancy Pelosi's bill does not do that. It's a corporate giveaway in disguise. Some people suggest that it might be attacking the pensions of workers. It is not going to do nearly enough to help regular 
working and middle class folks. And I think it's time that we all stand together with these 14 people standing against Pelosi. Again, some of them are considered moderates, but perhaps they realize that even if only in a partial sense, Nancy Pelosi is failing to represent the will of the Democratic caucus and she needs to be stood up against. We need to see more people take the stand. Even if this fails, though, we now know where the leadership needs to move. That these nine people who took the right stand here should be commended. And it doesn't mean we can't criticize them. It doesn't mean you can't criticize AOC. It doesn't mean you can't criticize Jayapal. It doesn't mean you can't criticize Katie Porter. It doesn't mean that. What it does mean, however, is that these folks are trying to fight against Nancy Pelosi's corrupt leadership, her elite driven leadership, and actually saying, if only imperfectly, what about the working class? Nancy Pelosi has never really give a damn about the working class. We know this. Neither do most of the Democratic congressional you know, membership. We know this. But it's good to see for the first time in a long time that it's, you know, it's not just Bernie in the Senate and like no one in the Congress. There's an actual progressive base there fighting for real inclusion. And so I think when you look about the differences between the Pelosi Democrats and the progressive Democrats, you can see there's a commitment to $2,000 a month. There's a commitment to expanded Medicaid and Medicare instead of, you know, handing out money to the rich and wealthy and well-connected. Nancy Pelosi failed regular Americans, and it's good to see people stand against it.